yesterday I did a video talking about how I think buying or getting a free computer, something that's worth less than $50 so that you can practice your skills is a better thing to do right now than invest in a computer not knowing what the market's going to be like. Now, that being said that I just kind of bought this on a lark just to have something to take apart and fiddle with, it pretty much always happens that when I get some, you know, old junk, I'm like, oh, this, this isn't going to do anything. This is, you know, it's a $30 computer, whatever. And then I start poking around and I always find that I did better than I thought or <laughs> things have more potential than I expected. So on that uh, topic, this guy, uh, I looked up what the motherboard can do. And this is a Socket 775 motherboard that is compatible with the newest core types. So I can actually do a 771 mod and put one of the latest Socket 771 Xeons in this thing. Which, I mean, yes, we're still talking an 11, 12 year old processor, but Xeons are amazing. Like I was building old Xeon workstations into gaming computers way before the cool kids were doing it. I just wasn't, I didn't have the smarts to turn on my camera back then and put it on YouTube. Uh, but it, it's really, it is a legit thing to do. Like I played on a system with a Xeon X5670 from like, I don't know, I mean 2016 to 2019. Like, I, I mean, this thing was, you know, it was six or seven years old by that point. And it was not bottlenecking uh, an RX 580 with eight gigs. And I was running a lot of games at 1440p or anything at 1080p high. So uh, yeah, it's amazing. Anyway, the ones I can get for this, they're quad core with no hyper threading, but honestly, they still perform pretty well. So I'm actually gonna turn this into a project. It's not just gonna be a joke where I'm fiddling around with this old computer. I'm gonna turn this into content on something of like, you'll be amazed honestly at what you can do with something this old. And I'm going to be demonstrating things like how sometimes when software won't boot, it's just because of a lockout. Because say, for example, the graphics card, I tried to uh, just be funny and I tried to start up Doom Eternal on this. And it was like, no, I, no, this doesn't support Vulkan. It doesn't support Shader Model 5.0. It doesn't support any of this stuff, dude. What are you even doing? But all of those are just lockouts because it doesn't support newer versions of say DirectX or something. Whereas on the other hand, there's when you're just not powerful enough to run something. So I'm going to demonstrate how with this old quad core Xeon, I'm gonna buy for, I'm hoping to get it under 10 bucks. Uh, and then I'm going to modify it, which this is a picture of how you actually do this mod. So interesting thing, when there are two sockets like that, like 771, 775, where they're basically the same thing, but there's just four pins different, that's very much like the video I did with the American Nintendo 64, just has a couple of plastic tabs stopping you from putting Japanese games in there. Manufacturers are incredibly lazy about stopping you from doing something. So in this case, it's usually just, you know, a couple extra ground pins, a dummy pin, something like that to just basically stop you from shoving the wrong thing in there. So with this simple mod, this is a sticker that you stick on there that just bridges a couple pins and boom, the motherboard doesn't know the difference and is like, oh, okay, this is fine. And then, you know, you got to do a little bit of, uh, if you want it to all run as good as possible, um, you have to modify your BIOS a little bit, uh, do a couple other little things, but this is not a complicated mod. And in the end, this Xeon processor is going to, I mean, honestly, you're going to be surprised. I'm going to run modern applications on a processor I'm going to buy for less than $10 and then I'm going to modify with a freaking sticker. So don't believe any of that nonsense about how much money you need to spend. There's always something way older than what the experts on the internet with their snobby free parts sent to them are saying is below acceptable. They're wrong. They have no idea what they're talking about. They just listen to the message that comes up from NVIDIA or the game developer that says, you can't do this, bro. Buy new stuff because we're in bed with the people that make new stuff. No, nah, no. Nah, we're going we're gonna to shoot some holes in those arguments with this thing. So that guy's on the way. Just ordered it today. Don't know how long it's going to be with everything backed up right now. But I'm going to be turning this into a cool project to just show you that those barriers are more arbitrary nonsense created by a man that does not apply in the on-off, yes-no world of machines. Another fun thing with this is this graphics card. So I mentioned that the, the 640 megabyte, 320 megabit, or 320 bit, uh, yeah, weird spec graphics card. So. Although that seems like a weird just piece of garbage, the funny thing is it actually has more memory bandwidth than, say, my Motile 14 or a Nintendo Switch. So 
if you actually get into something, like I'm going to put, uh, I know I can run Fortnite, Fortnite will let me run. Um, I'm trying to think what other new games I can actually, I'm pretty sure Overwatch will allow me to at least start it up. But you will be amazed at how well these run because all that stuff, it's like the thing about different sizes of memory buffers and graphics card and all of that, you may not realize this, but an eight gig memory buffer with half the bandwidth is the same speed as a card that has half the size of the buffer, but twice the bandwidth. It fills it and empties it twice as fast. So it's the same thing in practice. So when it comes to something like you may be looking at uh, these new cards that people use in laptops that have you know six, eight gigs of VRAM, but it's just not that fast because of the power limitations. There are old cards that have a fraction of the memory that are running two or three times faster in their memory bandwidth that actually can run games at the same frame rates as your 10 year newer thing. So sort of we're getting down into the guts of why this stuff is and what it truly is, ignoring the arbitrary nonsense of what is just what people say. So yeah, this computer is seriously, every part in here is 12 to 13 years old. I'm not gonna put anything in it that is less than 10 years old. And we're gonna be running modern games. And I mean, like seriously, like there's gonna be people somewhere in Estonia some kid is going to watch this video and be like, seriously, 50 bucks for this computer and it'll run Fortnite? Like, sign me up, you know? So that's the kind of information I like to spread, whereas a lot of people just spread opinion, you know, like they just hear, oh, you can't do this. You need to buy new stuff. You have to spend money and meet this barrier of entry in order to even be cool and participate. Otherwise, take your cruddy old glove and go home, poor kid. I don't like that. It's not true. It's nonsense. It's just a bunch of... Yeah, anyway, the Apocalypse PC. More episodes coming soon.